lift it off a little bit. That's I, fine. I don't think so. It oh, that's looks fine, dude. Pretty, uh, it looks he's pretty ready, live to he's me. He's ready to get into this. Yeah, I'm ready. Apparently. I'm ready to rip. I've already tortured you guys for like I don't know an hour now with the cameras. <laughs> Um, about that. It's okay. It's all good. <laughs> Couple of camera specialists in the house. Like, do you want to introduce yourselves and like what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, we're Ty and Cat, and we do um, photography here in Pensacola for events and commercial businesses. Yeah, you know, mostly. And our biggest client right now is Island Fights and everyone over there. Word. Hell yeah. yeah. So in your personal life, you go by Ty and you go by Cat. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I I did the math <laughs> and it Get added it up. figured yeah. out. Huh? <laughs> I see you, man. Yeah. No. You're doing good. I've been doing flashcards. Yeah. And they really work. For no me. cards and stuff. Yeah, man. That's good, dude. It's a good true story. Learn. When I was in elementary school, had problem mm-hmm. with speaking, and I mean, it's rearing its ugly head again. Still does. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But flashcards really helped me out when I was like, they're like, oh, he's slow, and I was like, well, maybe not. Just go right to that, but. They helped me figure mm-hmm. out words. So. Mm-hmm. That's good. Do you still have them? Do you still use them? The flashcards or yeah. the words? No, the flashcards. <laughs> okay. I, I know no, I know you don't use the words. I try. Mm. The flashcards I don't have anymore. I think that was like they had to We should them. get some of those for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. No, that's cool. But uh, so what is y'all's background in, I assume it's photography and then like you've kind of gone further in videography as well? Um, yeah, or, we don't, we don't do too much video stuff. We mostly just do photography. Um, like, like I said, we do a lot of stuff here in Pensacola. So we do, uh, like gallery night, island fights. What else? Uh, we work just a lot with off the wall local businesses. Mm. So, you know, mm. things like the farm or just random ones like this one tutoring company that we worked with. Um, basically just all local businesses and events. It's pretty. Okay vague so <laughs> like so for gallery night who puts that on is that the city of pensacola no, or is that like it, a... it's a private company it's a it's a private organization okay mm-hmm. and so they yeah so they just got all the city permissions and stuff to shut down the street around pal fox mm-hmm. for a night you think the city would have figured that out first because you think the city <laughs> yeah. would want money right they would charge like yeah but because that's it's the thing vendors. is that it's not it's not the city putting it it's, it, uh, it's like the local businesses are supposed to be the that's supposed to be I mean, I get that, yeah. but you would think they would have, I mean, local yeah. government in there, like, yeah. they want money, they right? They want the money. No, yeah, you right. <laughs> you right. Right, you know? And yeah. they could influence things, and then they'll put, like, just their vendors out. They're like, yeah. well, we well, like KFC, not Chick-fil-A, you know? <laughs> you would oh. think. I don't know. Yeah. So why why not videography so much? Is there, like, a love more so for photos versus video? Or is that, like, a maybe an evolution of what you guys eventually want to do um yeah it'll probably come in later like i know that she has no interest I hate in video, video yeah. at all <laughs> i'm sort of neutral with it mm. um but, but why is that why i hate it yeah i don't know i just hate it <laughs> <laughs> she's like i just like I looking really at photos don't. i don't even yeah. like watching tv yeah. well it's... there's just photos everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like you ha- it's um i guess it's just kind of I'm very comfortable with the whole editing process, the mm. whole like how to use the camera and everything. And it's more along the lines of I just have no interest in learning it because mm-hmm. it's a whole other world. You have to learn all these different settings, as you know, you kind of saw. Yeah. With and I video. barely <laughs> retained anything. But that's yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so with the, like just getting the f- uh, video itself and then the whole editing process just blows up into incredible like just so many different details yeah like color grading that's a thing you gotta dude, do dude i mean uh and do you are you guys aware of uh river yeah yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah so obviously i mean he does youtube videos and he does one on uh color grading and like how intense that can get and just like like for example like we're just doing a podcast right now and you can see like it's it looks difficult mm-hmm. but it's really not but, mm-hmm. like, from the outside point of view looking in, that looks intense. Like, there's right? shit going on. The first on. time I ever saw something like this, like, you guys said y'all tried out a podcast on Audacity before. Mm-hmm. Like, when I first ever saw it on Audacity and I tried it out on a Chromebook, I was like, maybe this isn't it for us. <laughs> yeah. You know? I was this like... This is a big leap, yeah. you know? Because the first one we ever did was on this, like... it. It looked like a, a camera or like a thicker phone. Yeah, and it, it had like a space four mics. Mic they just yeah. had the road yeah. like turn mics, mm-hmm. and and it was just sat on the desk just like that. And 
we uh, our buddy Kitty had like a camera and just recording us like this. And he synced it up later. And I was like, man, that seems so unbelievably difficult to me. Like, why can't the camera just pick up everything? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, but now, like, we just run, like, four mics, like, the audio interface, the computer, the camera, like, and we link it all together. So I can see, like, how it could be, like, holy shit, that's a lot of stuff to yeah. do. Yeah. But, I mean, y'all figured out photos really well, like, yeah. super yeah. well. Well, I, it wasn't always easy. We actually started off on really crappy phone, uh, cameras. Like, we're trying to, like, dog shit. Cameras. Yeah, we, like we, it, was, it, was, it was cameras that we both sort of stole from our dads, respectively. <laughs> nice. And so, nice. I mean, there was nothing that was, like, possible to... Yeah, mine was a... Oh, what's it, it called? Sony Cybershot. Cybershot. Sony Cybershot from, like, 2004. Oh, and this wow. was only, like, Damn. four or five years ago. Yeah. So it was a really old. And I had, wow. a like, a Nikon D50. And so it was... It has three focus points, like, <laughs> on the on As the opposed screen. to what now? Like, almost 300? Well, yeah, it's, like... 500 and crazy so wow it's a it was a big it was a big jump but once you mm. once you learn how to use really bad equipment you become super thankful for good stuff yeah, and yeah. it's so much easier to use yeah mm-hmm. and it makes it seem like almost dummy proof sometimes yes i, mean, I, w- I wouldn't know what like that, that feels like the dummy proof thing because i figured the mm. dummies shit out pretty quick mm. <laughs> but uh yeah it's crazy like how the the jumps in like tech has been like especially with phones like it seems like everybody can record like literally off their phone like there's some podcasts that are like famous for trying out just recording off their phones and they do like really good work like how clear this one is like they have some that are that clear Mm -hmm. wow and it's like but you take three photos on your phone and your phone's like hey do you want to buy more space yeah Yeah. so i'm like maybe not a whole podcast not even Mm -hmm. one episode yeah yeah, it is crazy how fast now, like, you see, specifically for phones, too, because there are ads everywhere, but, like, you know, the ones that have, like, six different cameras in them and stuff like that, and mm-hmm. different, you know, all different kinds of crazy shit, but, but, yeah, that it, it's, it is insane how fast, specifically camera stuff, too, has been, been yeah. getting wild, you mm-hmm. know? It's like but, the, the great space race of, like, the 70s and the 80s is like yeah. the great camera race of now yeah. for who can put the most phones. cameras on the back of a phone yeah. Yeah. you know mm-hmm. it's just gonna be one big lens <laughs> i mean you seen the new iphones bro that's pretty much what it is dude yeah that's true it's crazy they have four cameras on the back i think and there's a samsung that has six i think now like straight up i think there's yeah, six how, on the back of one how, yeah. how about just one <laughs> yeah that's really just make good. a good one you know yeah. that's fine that's good yeah i don't know and if you want six cameras, then buy a different camera. And maybe <laughs> just do that for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. try that out. I assume there's got to be, like, because there's different things in any field that's, like, this is, its specialty is, like, like you were talking about earlier on this thing, like, the low mm-hmm. lighting effect is, like, it's good at picking it up. There's mm-hmm. got to be things like that. Like, that. maybe that's why there's different cameras. Yeah, I think that's probably what right it is. yeah they, they keep shoving the different cameras on the back of phones for like the different focal lengths so so that way they can because normally what a single camera does is it's that same crop factor that we were kind of talking about before where as you where it's just one focal length and as you zoom in it sort of just it, it just crops in and you lose definition to make it because yeah. you're not actually zooming in you're just cropping in really far and so that's why they try and add on a bunch of different cameras so that way mm. you can keep like a wide angle of telephoto, like a standard zoom, but mm. without sacrificing the megapixels of turning a wide to telephoto. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. wonder at what point it's going to be enough. Like, like how much further can cameras get, you know, like, yeah, like for well, example, I know I keep bouncing back to phones, but like now they're starting to go back to flip. Yeah. You yeah. know, like mm-hmm. the new androids have a flip version where this, or maybe it's Samsung, the Samsung Android. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. the same thing? Samsung uses it, Android, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything that's not iPhone. But it's like one solid... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's yeah. one solid screen now. Yeah. Like, even when mm-hmm. it folds and then when it opens it's back so up, it's weird one looking, screen. Dude. It's so weird. I don't even understand how that works, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's got to be flexible. I know, but like... It's like rope. <laughs> you know? It, it's got to be like that cord. Like that cord, you can bend that cord, but then the cord will go back. In my head, it's like it makes sense. It's like a ribbon. He's doing a really good job in explaining just how things bend. Yeah, dude, yeah. I'm fucking. 
Do you remember flashcards, dude? You- I told you about the flashcards. <laughs> flashcards just a picture of a cord, and he's like, "That's a Samsung." <laughs> I'm like, "That Ow. thing is bendy." Yeah. Yeah. That's bendy right there. Yeah. Do you remember when the the like I think it was the iPhone tens or maybe the eights or something? The hey, L. You're the not big one? allowed to talk about new phones. Hey man, what are I you? I have a newer phone. IPhone 6? I've got an iPhone eight. All right. What's up, dude? I mean, I think iPhones at like sixteen now or something, something like that. But they can't. Maybe it was the seven or anyway. They came out with the first large one where it was like the six L or whatever. Oh yeah, it was or plus. Massive. That's what it was. It the was six like, plus. It was here. huge. <laughs> but Hello? you remember? I remember in high school. I think is when it came, when I was in high school, like my senior year, people would have it in their front pocket or the back pocket, and they would bend because they were so big, and also jeans were very tight back then. But they would bend, they would literally bend in half, yeah. and they had to like recall a bunch of them because they were just like breaking in people's back pockets. Or back people pocket. were just like their fat old asses were <laughs> well tight jeans, you know. I don't know about that one. But you think they were just like the phone itself was just sitting there, it, and then all of a sudden it was like. <laughs> I don't think it did it by itself, but I'm just <laughs> so saying, how can they like just a minimal amount of ass. pressure was just like the minimal, fucking, eh, just a little bit. Can you put your hand in that pocket? Yeah, I'm not yet. I mean, when I got it in there some. The phone, I didn't have one. I'm just okay. saying, people did. Okay, I don't. Know and they got plausible. it in there somehow, right? I'm sure that got, got thrown it out. out in court. I don't know, man. I broke Probably. my phone so many times in my pocket from skateboarding. I didn't sue the cell phone. Should have, dude. You should have, man. You know, I once broke a phone. I had a like. <laughs> we're just gonna talk about this for a second. I had like one of the slide phones, you know, with the keyboard. The sidekick. <laughs> no. That was the one that flipped, wasn't it? Like that? Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, mine was just a slidey rig. But I, for some reason, I was in a hospital. I remember that part. But I stuck a movie Making ticket in up. the slide. <laughs> <laughs> I was in a hospital, and I had a movie ticket in my pocket. And I slid the movie ticket in the phone, and the phone just turned off. <laughs> like, it was just like, <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know why I stuck it in there. <laughs> but I was like, like no. Nah. I was like, if it slides, there's got there's nothing in there, right? Because <laughs> if I can fucking slide it, there's got there's no problem. So I stuck a movie ticket in, and my phone was like, nah, dude, we're out. <laughs> Did it never turn back on? Never, not even once, dude. Wow. Straight up. Did you take it out? The movie, the movie ticket? ticket? Yeah. yeah. No, no, I left the movie ticket. <laughs> <laughs> it's still in there. That's yeah. my movie ticket. Don't mess with it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not putting my movie tickets in. Yeah. No, yeah, I took it out and it did not turn back on. It didn't like it. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> yeah, That's I had to go weird. get a new phone. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't know. So, so. <laughs> <laughs> so movie tickets. No, yeah. No, getting back to your guy's <laughs> profession. So what started your like rode down photography like what was it that was like i assume y'all both individually did it and then found each other nope no y'all did it at the same time no yeah yeah we did at the same time we uh so what did you do before it like we'll start there like so what what was was it beforehand y'all were doing and then you're like Mm -hmm. oh fuck this (laughs) well nothing really i mean we were we had uh so we knew each other freshman year in high school that's when we met and then we just stayed friends forever and then we went to UWF like like a couple years early on like one of their school programs, whatever. And it was uh and so it was there and we had a bunch of extra time, like at the university because we were technically still in high school, but technically at college at the same time. And so it was just all of our high school classes were replaced with college courses. And so we just kept um spending time there. We we're like, you know what, why not? try something else so why not try something new together and so that's when we both grabbed whatever cameras we had accessible at the time and just started taking pictures around was there something else you guys were like let's try this and then that didn't yeah work? so it's actually so he's the one who started all i would say because when i met him he was like really deep in this whole entrepreneurial idea um, whereas I was very goody two shoes academic academics all that stuff mm-hmm. um, like he was making a seashells necklaces oh yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> he was yeah. trying to sell them on the beach that's what it's like you know that kind of entrepreneurial spirit yeah. like in high school um and so i would say that it was his i don't know if it was deliberate but like over a course of like the next few years where we were friends he would just kind of like continuously plant this entrepreneur like um seed in my brain and then he made 
me read this book called Crushing It by Gary Vaynerchuk. Do you know mm. him? I was just about yeah. to call you Gary V on the <laughs> seashell thing. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't read, but I oh. believe you. There's a book. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> What dude? <laughs> you want to know what's really funny about this dude? <laughs> is he got a he got a book gifted to him, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's by a really a person he really enjoys. Okay. And he's been he was talking about this book. He was like, "Man, I'm stoked to read this thing." Okay. He read he, he read what like two pages, and then he was like, "Man, let me see if they have an audio book." <laughs> <laughs> Bought the audio book. The book's right the whole there. thing. I was like, man, so you didn't even read it? Nah, man. No, but I listened to it. So yeah. That's yeah. the point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got what they were saying. Anyway, sorry. I didn't mean to cut no, you off. No, you're good. Um, um, but yeah, we basically read his book where he kind of talks about how branding is like the whole shebang. You mm-hmm. have to like brand yourself. You have to do every, document everything, all this stuff. And that's kind of how we started. We started taking really crappy photos on our phones, yeah. the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You know those stupid like photos of like the leaves that you take with your phone. You're like, oh my god, the ref- the like I mean, sunshine through yeah. the leaf. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he still that. posts that. But yeah, it's fine. That. that type mm-hmm. of stuff. That's what we we, okay. we thought we were like, man, we're like professionals <laughs> at this point. <laughs> yeah, and man. then we picked up our parents' cameras. That was basically the start mm-hmm. of it. Yeah, th- there's a big learning curve with photography, particularly whenever people first get into it. Do you like think you're the best, and mm-hmm. then it the hits Dunn you like, effect. yeah, the Dunning Kruger effect. It's like our favorite. Are you guys aware of it? Mm, no, but we're about no. to be. <laughs> yeah, you need to like Lightly. put it up on the wall. It's it's the greatest yes. thing. It, um, yeah. yeah. Do you want me to explain it? Yes, you can explain it. Explain. Right. So it's a so it's a curve between competence and experience. So it's sort of so. There's, so on one scale, there's time, and on one scale, there's confidence. Yeah. So like uh, how much experience you have in whatever skill, be it photography, jiu-jitsu, whatever else. And there's how actually skillful you are at it, or, or there's the how confident you are at it. Like it's how what you perceive yourself to be. And so when you start out with someone with zero experience, like nothing, like you have no experience, you have no knowledge of it, people have zero confidence in it. Yeah. But the moment people get a little bit of experience, the confidence skyrockets up to like a hundred percent. Like they are like upon having a little bit of experience, people think that they're the best at it. And then they're, and then reality comes as more experience comes and it falls back down to like nothing. Yeah. You realize mm. everything that you don't know about yeah. it. Yeah. So you could probably relate to jujitsu. Yeah. Like right. how, when you started, you were like, I don't know. Anything. Well, I don't know how y'all, how much y'all know about this, but. I've been doing it almost six years. He's been doing it almost three months. So oh, we're very, very different difference. points yeah. in our career. Are yeah. you confident in your abilities yet? Um, I feel I will, better about than where I was. I will say he doesn't have this. What do you say, Donnie Kruger? Yeah, yes. A, yeah. He doesn't have this. It's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not yeah. everybody no, has no, no, it. He's no, no, no. very yeah. humble and very like, like he doesn't think. But yeah. that might be mm-hmm. because he's surrounded by absolute killers all the time. So he like mm-hmm. he's aware of where he stands. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, by no, yeah. it's by no means like universal. Like it doesn't affect yeah. everyone. Yeah. But it's super common. It, it is. It is wild though that for some reason, and maybe it's just because of the people I follow, but. You see that a lot in photography specifically yeah. because you'll see somebody hey, buy a camera. Locally. You'll buy a cam- oh, yeah. somebody will buy a camera and then they think like, hey, I'm, I'm booking photo weddings, shoots. I'm taking, yeah, I'm yeah. doing yeah. shoots and it's like, I'm bro, doing you, proms you've been and... doing this for two months. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I appreciate your grind. No, like, I really that's awesome. do. Yeah. No, like, like, but my aunt does it. Keep on. Also, really good. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, it, but specifically photography. I don't know why oh, yeah. that is, yeah. but I guess it's just because it's subjective. Like, there's like there's things that are much more objective like that won't that'll be harder for that kind of effect to come in like mm. jujitsu where it's like oh well he taps me out every like five minutes i'm not yeah. as good as that whereas photography it's just purely how everyone sees and how right. you see it mm-hmm. yeah, and how do you like humble yourself because like if you are new like say our same experiences were in photography mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like how does he not or how is he aware of my skill like how is he able to look at his own photo like say we take the same picture Mm -hmm. which might be impossible to do i don't know but like say it's the same picture like we just take a picture of you Mm -hmm. how is he to tell like his is not as good as mine Mm -hmm. like what if his is better than mine like Mm -hmm. who knows that Mm -hmm. like how do you tell like Mm -hmm. if you were to show me a catalog of pictures and you put in like say there's 60 photos and you put in 10 shitty ones Mm -hmm. i will not be able to pick those 10 out Yes. Mm -hmm. Probably only you guys can do that. So, like... Well, I think that's basically the entire 
gist of it is that oh it's only once you're in when you go deep enough that you actually start to realize yeah. how shit you, you are. You need to get over the hill. You have to get over the hill in order and you to don't actually know when, see. you don't know when the hill ends. That's the whole point. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, like, without calling yourselves out, are y'all past the shit hill or are y'all in the shit hill? I, well, now you're putting us on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Actually, we're professionals, 100% masters. Yeah, that, that's kind of that's kind of the catch-22 of it. You're like is you can't say where you are on the scale because if you say, oh, I'm passing, I'm super confident, then well, then you're all at the, the other beginning. photographers are going to yeah. look at me like, uh-huh. So is it, yeah. is it like staying, it, like you have to stay on your grind to be that good? Is it like something like that? Or can you put down the camera and then 20 years later, you still be good enough to take a like array of photos well, and still be on that level? Or is I it, think you could think of it as any skill. Photography is not different yeah, than any, jiu-jitsu. Any if school. you had stopped doing jiu-jitsu for like, you know, four years and you came back to it, mm. how good would you be? It's kind Yeah, of it would take you a while to get back. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. Pro- probably also like the the photography game develops. Changes, yeah. And it's yeah. ever changing, it's, right? It's it's also photography like the world of photography, it's not even about how good your photos are though. Like in how good your photography is means nothing. It's, it means a little bit. It means a little <laughs> it obviously means a little bit past a pure amateur level, but past that, it's all it's all like business connections, networking. It's it's it has yes. nothing like you can. Our photos could be half as decent, and we and you could still reach different levels. Like mm-hmm. the MMA world, particularly, is the most cutthroat one by far, mm-hmm. because everyone who roams around in the audience or just just beyond ringside yeah. is always desperately trying to take a photo weasel their way in you know mm-hmm. it's 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 super it's just happening all the time being around these events like i mean obviously we're in the sport but like being around it it's one of the things that i'm least attracted to as far as like i would never no, that's fine i would never <laughs> no yeah get that out of here <laughs> i would never want to enter in like for example like mm-hmm. You ever been to a truck stop? <laughs> okay, <no. laughs> it's gonna go weird, but uh, <laughs> we take a step back on this one. They have what you call lot lizards. You know what that is? I know. Mm-hmm. It's like ladies that hang out at the truck stop. Okay, okay. The they try to give you night company if oh, you okay. pick up what I'm saying. So I feel like at events like this, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. What? What I'm saying is like. No, There's two. Where you're going. Who's the lot lady in this situation? <laughs> in, the, in this situation, there are literal lot ladies there. Oh yeah. Or lot oh, yeah. lizards is what they're called, but we'll call them lot ladies because maybe <laughs> that's, that's nice. Or... That's nice. <laughs> yeah, I like no. that. Uh, but two things there is like the girls that are trying to hook up with MMA people, mm-hmm. and then the photographers that are trying to take good shots and be somewhere in the industry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those two, I would never do either one of those things. <laughs> I would never be with one of those girls, and I would never try to enter in taking photos of a sport like this because, like, it's probably from knowing Kitty, but like, he he used to film like the sideline, the fifty yard mark for mm-hmm. FSU games, mm-hmm. and he's like, he only did that for like, I think maybe two seasons mm-hmm. for like the college football, but he was like, dude. Just he just did it to get a like a taste of what it would be like if he tried to go out mm-hmm. for like ESPN or something. Mm-hmm. He's like, dude, not even worth it. <laughs> the amount of people that are doing whatever they can to get in my position, yeah. and like I was just oh, doing yeah. it to that get experience. Thing. He wasn't like he just did it to get a taste. He wasn't like this is I'm gonna be ESPN. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like the amount of people like he was just saying like you see taking photos and like I mean. Mm-hmm. He did something similar to this. You didn't take photos, but you DJed. Like that is another industry yeah, that's I kind did, of like that. that. It's like I did that and videography for a while. Yeah, but yeah. I think you were more heavy on the DJ, right? Yeah, for sure. So it's like, I mean, even he did the photography. Oh thing. yeah, I mean, I listen. You dude, were a lot lizard. Bro. Listen, bro. When they <laughs> when they started talking wedding money, bro, I oh. was like, heck yeah, I'll do it. Oh, like, yeah. no, we're not. I mean, about, so how do you set weddings. yourself apart from that? I guess is what I was starting at. Yeah. Or getting towards. You you kind of, you have to be more valuable. Yeah. Like there's, like that that's just the essence of it. You, because past it, they, everyone can look past the quality. Like it, yeah, it doesn't sure, matter. I don't know how, it's something I wish I could see is past, you know, with a, uh, what do you call it? A cold eye. 
Mm -hmm. because for us you know this is gonna sound really pretentious but it's very easy to find the really bad photographers and especially in different you know championships and things like that we're like why would you ever hire this person this person everything is green you know why would you want this but somehow they're still there they're still the consistent person and it makes you wonder you know on what they're doing to provide value outside of the quality of their Mm -hmm. photos Mm -hmm. so and, and that comes back to the business aspect of it. Yes, you know? that's yeah. what it was. Like, like we we weren't a uh, lot lizard. Like, w- like so I had. <laughs> that's his new uh, favorite word. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna. Yes. I know. I know. I love that. Um, yeah. So I had. So in order to even get into the industry, I had, um, given Dean a phone call. Like I found. I I dug found his number. I don't recommend people do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I I dug and found his number, and then. He, and then I told them that I like to take photos. And this is whenever the whole COVID thing was going on and they were out, over at the shrine. Yeah. Um, and I had said um, that, hey, yeah, I was like, I'd like to take photos for this. And he was like, how much do you want to be paid? You know, very blunt. Well, you that, also have to remember, that yeah. wasn't your first time there. It wasn't my first time. The, the first, first time, time we did was we actually um, founded the photography club at UWF while we were over there. Um and we used we applied for the media pass to mm-hmm. Island Fights using mm-hmm. Photography Club as our ethos, mm-hmm. and um, so we, you just took photos of it. Just yeah, I just I went. This and was took at photos the time where fun. we were just practicing. So was Dana aware that you did it for free the first time? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So we and I, then he was like, "Yo, your shit's good enough. Like, what's up?" Well, it was sort of like so. There was the one time that I did it for free with the media pass. Waited like a year or like six months later, and then realized that there's still no photographer there called um said that it asked to do it he's like how much you want to get paid i was like i'll do this one for free too like i was there once before we'll do another one for free we'll see the value that's there and so then did that one next one comes around we talk and then we've gotten paid the same rate ever since but Mm -hmm. it only came because of the fact that we went through the proper steps didn't try and take shortcuts didn't try and like weasel our way in there like, yeah. go behind the sidelines we were very upfront forward business transaction provided value and it went from there it wasn't like we were just taking pictures from the side and then hoping to like talk to someone and yeah. get our yeah. way in like we like were... tag them and everything so yeah, they'll exactly. see it or something yeah. it's like no it's like just because you tag someone doesn't mean you didn't talk to them like hey, hey man yeah. yo you're undercutting what we're doing. <laughs> no, I mean, okay, no, so. I mean, listen, we are lot lizards, like no, straight yeah. up, like straight we up. We have to get. We track. tag everybody. Well, no, oh, I mean, no, no, no. You have no, to understand tagging is different. a part of the branding. Yeah. You have to do that. No, right. That's well, not the the point. Like you can you can tag everyone. It's well, wait. It depends. Who are you tagging? Are you tagging people outside? I mean, name a we're, person. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, are you, ta- kidding, are you like tagging no, the no, no, president? No. Like you're also trying no, to get no, 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 like, no, We only tag people no, that we'll tag like are, relevant to our yeah, exactly. or whatever, like comedians and stuff or whatever. Like it, it's not that far. That I don't mean it in that. The whole like. We have to approach it differently than you guys. Like it's you a have to do it. Industry. Yeah, you, Very, exactly. Yeah, you have yeah. to do it professionally, and then we have to network to like hope that somebody sees us to get somebody like interested bigger or, like, in this. Yeah, and it's like too. if we're going after somebody, like we've been trying to have Dean on for a while. Yeah. Dean's busy, mm-hmm. so He's like big, yeah. I probably wouldn't recommend us looking up his phone number. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I have, I have his address. Whoa! <laughs> I mean, I do too. But <laughs> yes, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, but uh, we don't have his phone number. I mean, if you guys accidentally left it here, right. that would be wild. Right. Uh, <laughs> Hello, um, he's our player. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, he's honored. not going to listen to this. But yeah, no, it's like we have to do things like that that might be a little different. Mm-hmm. But uh, how do you, in that situation, beat somebody that's trying to shortcut? That maybe is like, again, you say like, the the quality of the photo is like the beauties in the eye of the beholder kind of thing like mm-hmm. what if dean was like oh yeah this is cool and then y'all is also cool but this dude's like yo i'll do it for free forever like how do you beat something like that i think that's a problem that every every industry faces yeah, yeah like, exactly every like industry. i don't we don't we don't even have a clear answer to that we're the not only... saying we're you know 100 percent set in stone like we're you know, completely protected, and that yeah. nothing like that. Yeah, will ever we're we're, we're far from protected. Like, there's there's anyone who could come and undercut us any day of the week. Right. But the the nature is, it's like the what 
what you have to hope is that the relationship that you built is more valuable than going and trusting someone else with, right. with the work. I also think right. it's a lot of um, you as a business owner, you have to sit there and you have to say, what is everyone else not doing that yeah. I need to do? It's continuously making yourself better mm-hmm. so that you are better. Right. You know, I will say like gonna, props to you for eyeing that they don't have a photographer at the time because that like was very mind-blowing that yeah they also no. you know what they're missing is like they don't have like like their website itself and i i don't mean to like downgrade anybody or anything mm-hmm. it needs to be more up to date like because you go on there and try and buy tickets you'll see like four island fights ago is still on there mm-hmm. but it won't yeah. have like the island fights that are now on there mm-hmm. they like won't be up-to-date photos and stuff sometimes and it's like there's things there and I'm, I'm not a whiz on websites or anything but i know what it should yeah. look like like there should be things that are like interactive yeah. on it you can set reminders in your own calendar or something mm-hmm. to like key you up on like when tickets go live or something there's things like that that i feel like locally is missed like there's no like like five bananas isn't here mm-hmm. it's in like Tampa or Orlando or yes. Daytona Beach or something. Daytona. Like some, yeah. It's over there, you know? Yeah. Like, nobody here is locally keeping you up to date. Like, after Island Fights goes live, you don't really see the results until the following day if the fighters themselves post it. Mm-hmm. It's really rare that it's, like, current, live, on the fly. Like, yeah. I mean, that's a problem with a lot of amateur events or, like, semi-amateur slash pro no. events. Like, B2 is another big one out of Birmingham. It's like, or Kentucky, they might be out of, but they do like all over yeah, that they area. Move around a little bit, yeah. Like they have that problem too. It's like only if they're in their story, but like their posts are only the next day or even maybe sometimes further away. Yeah. Like we mm-hmm. have our buddy Frank fights for them all the time. Like, and sometimes yeah. I won't see how he does yeah. until I Unless message you're him. watching it. But yeah, or, or if you're watching the yeah. pay per view. Mm-hmm. It's like that's something that is also missing Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. like if somebody's listening i think it's it's actually a very common thing for a lot of business owners because i think um and i'm sure as you guys grow you'll have the same problem where essentially you get so busy with everything else that these things seem less important which is one of the biggest marketing moves we have when we reach out to business owners because how often do you see you know say like a cupcake you know, business or whatever, post every single day with brand new yeah. photos on their social media and update everything. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. super it's, hard. Like, we yeah. try to post, like, th- I just recently sat down and really thought about this because somebody asked me, like, how are you staying up on marketing and stuff? The day before an episode drops, I try to post a clip. Mm-hmm. The day mm-hmm. of, I post the album artwork and, like, where you can mm-hmm. get it. Then the following day, I post a clip from the prior day. Like, hey, did you watch that episode? Mm -hmm. then typically that's like it goes sunday for the clip then monday for the artwork tuesday for the clip and then wednesday is a clip for the next one Mm -hmm. that drops thursday the clip is or the artwork's thursday and then friday is a clip for the one that just dropped thursday and then there's like saturday you kind of have a lull of like like personal time you get to do whatever and like you could promote stuff you Mm -hmm. could like we also like help promote other things that like people that have been on like if you guys had something come on like moving forward like we'd try to help promote it and like Mm -hmm. put it on our story and whatnot and then like sunday you promote for the following monday like and you are in Mm -hmm. that rhythm i think there's the one one thing that is very good about the instagram is there is never a time where there's not something on the story or being posted Mm -hmm. which i think is a really big deal and and there are like staying in the island yeah constantly reels what are you guys doing reels? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We got. Yeah. We got. We, our, our second eyes reel opened. ever went like twenty thousand. Yeah. But yeah. We we I'm had not a, there yet again. But that's fine. <laughs> we had a um, one of our homies that is a big like TikTok guy, and he was like, "Dude, if y'all aren't doing it, get on it." And mm-hmm. so from then, we've tried to incorporate that as much as we can. You yeah. Know? But mm-hmm. it is hard to have like personal life, work. Oh, dude. Like. Jiu-jitsu as a hobby, mm. posting on s- social media on multiple websites, like yeah. editing, like making the clips. It's hard to do all those things. So it's like we focus mainly on Instagram because mm-hmm. like it seems like Instagram is the number one or like TikTok mm-hmm. is probably the number one. But like or TikTok slowly becoming the number one. But like Instagram, I feel like is still number one right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like TikTok's blowing up. But it is it, it, it is like hard to juggle all that. But hopefully, like, we don't get busy enough that it, like, 
detract from the quality. I always want it to be like high quality on uh, what we put out. That's why like the whole camera thing is so big to me. Like anybody listening, this is going to be a new camera. Like you're seeing this exact episode on and maybe we'll get to this camera one day, but they're letting us borrow this camera for this episode. But like, that's something big to me. These Mm -hmm. mics are big to me. Like these mics are like 270, almost 300 bucks each. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I, we wanted to be able to have more than three people on. So it's like us and a guest, Mm -hmm. but we like some companies have two people like you guys, big jerk soda. Mm -hmm. There's like other companies like that. And we didn't want to exclude people like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you invest in stuff like that and you want your product to be different. Like it's hard in podcasts, probably harder or easier to tell right off if the product is nice looking Mm -hmm. versus a good product. We're probably a shitty product, but we look good, (laughs) you know, like, but in like for y'all, it's probably easier to tell if your photos look nice versus, Mm. I don't even know what the shortcut would be for you guys. Is it, is it color or something? Something looks more colorful. You can get pretty far on really cheap equipment and photography. Like we were saying, like the quality of the photos have to be up to a certain standard but they don't have to be the best standard. Yeah. And so you can get pretty far on relatively inexpensive equipment. Like anyone who wants to get into the world of photography, like if, if I were to start out with no money, it would be like a Canon T6i with a 50 millimeter lens because the, uh, the moment that you can get your, um, the moment that you can get a prime lens on, I mean, like, it doesn't zoom at all, but that's important in photography because usually you get lower apertures, so that way you can do um, better in low light and a larger depth of field. Like, you know, whenever the background gets really blurry on a photo, that's usually, like, the hallmark of professionalism. When a photo is sharp, clear, blurred background, and the colors are nice, like, you can get pretty far on that. And so the the biggest part, like, the biggest part is... You can you can get far if you if you are looking to make photography like a passion or you're looking to make money with it like the biggest thing is you just got to talk to people and you mm-hmm. got to, and like we like we focus on talking to businesses and you just have to be hyper involved with whoever you want to be doing business with. So is this what you guys do full time or do y'all have jobs and this is like what you're trying to make your full time? Yeah, we do this full time. That's yeah, awesome. We just quit awesome. our full time jobs like back of la- in the la- uh, December of last year. Y'all are the second crazy. person on the couch in like the last month and a half or something that quit their full time. I can't remember who the other person was. Somebody just, someone else just quit their job to do what they're doing full time. Mm-hmm. And it was like, dude, that's wild. Yeah, I couldn't like, tell you. One day. We'll yeah, be there yeah, one day. That's awesome, that's, though. Yeah, congrats. congrats. Y'all. Yeah, Thank that's, that's Thank crazy. You. I mean, it's better than working at State Farm. Like, yeah. I worked at State Farm, <laughs> and I was working with, and I'm licensed in insurance in the state of Florida. Hey. And I know some people, so, yeah. but it is not worth it. <laughs> I don't like desk jobs at all. Yeah. Yeah. And she also had a desk job, too. No, I was a receptionist at a law firm. Mm. Nice. Wow. You know a lot about real estate, if you want. <laughs> hey. He just, he, he's about to take his license. Yeah, my licensing exam. Ooh, nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah, Florida's yeah. an awful state for the real estate license, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's super fun, man. <laughs> yeah, it's been great. Um, loving it loving it but yeah no it's exciting do you want to like mix the two like photography with yeah real estate, real estate one day i mean uh, do- i mean let's i mean i'm just saying if you know maybe you know i'm selling a house or something <laughs> i need some pictures taken mm-hmm. what's up dude well now we have a connection <laughs> that's right y'all are the yeah. best photographers in the room oh wow that's a really big compliment <laughs> yeah i mean i barely know how to work the camera yeah I, he sits I really there. Do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, I just take videos of him fixing the camera. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of those. Um, yeah, man, that's that's good shit though. That's that's super exciting. That so did you guys? Whenever you kind of started on this path, did you know that this is something that eventually you wanted to do full time? Like, was this once you got into it, you knew like I want to try and do this. See this thing. Um, I think for both of us it's always been the um work for yourself mentality mm-hmm. it's always been that you know gary v really hit y'all hard huh yeah, yeah. <laughs> much before his nft craze before but, yeah mm. now he's kind he of he just wanted an nft yeah i just won a f- my first one i mean if you didn't oh, pay wow. for it good on you yeah <laughs> yeah so if heard, you pay for it then it's like i'm personally yeah. very much against like nfts and crypto and all that stuff yeah. really i'm yeah we're we're Man, the don't start talking about investments we're gonna get some haters oh yeah yeah no i will i will 
rant about investments, but <laughs> yeah. it is a weird, it's a weird thing, man. Mm-hmm. I don't know enough about it to have any kind of you know viewpoint and everything. Yeah, he I, I, he goes. I won the NFT because there was a competition with a jujitsu gym in Decatur. Yeah. Okay. They were doing uh, a giveaway. Planet. You know Brandon McCaffrey. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. So he had the NFTs. Yeah, yeah. Like he won one of those, and okay. he was like, "Dude, I just won the thing." And he sent me a picture of the screenshot of him winning, and he goes, "I don't know what to do now." <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he goes, "I'm waiting to hear back from him," and he goes. I don't know if I have it already or if <laughs> Dude, I'm going it's, to have like, it. It's, well, and it was it in it was a great like I'm stoked about it because it's now I can learn about it. You know what I'm saying? Like there's mm-hmm. now I know kind of what's going on. But I mean, it's like having a baby. Like now you have to grow. Yeah, now I gotta. Now I gotta figure it out. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. But yeah, maybe um, that's not a good comparison. <laughs> yeah. If you don't take care of it, does it like go away? I gotta water it every day. Yeah. Word. Yeah. <laughs> So it like it looks like a mm-hmm. baseball card, mm-hmm. yeah. But it's digital. But like, where's it at? <laughs> you know, dude. No idea. Show him. <laughs> Show him the one that you got, because he just showed me today for the first time. Yeah. I thought it was like maybe like he would get something in the mail, like, and it would be like mm-hmm. something that yeah. represents that, the well, thing. That, that's, the, that's the problem. That's the problem with NFTs and all that stuff. Is is you can't replicate physical value. And it's and while you can say well everyone likes to say all day that it's like there's a lot of digital value in it. Hold on, let me just yeah. take a uh, picture real quick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's nothing. There's no. Yeah, right. Pro- no That's pro- what I was thinking. Yeah, there's no proprietary hold on it. It's it's a JPEG on a screen, and it can be duplicated, replicated, and although you can show ownership of it, you don't get to exercise the value of actually physically owning it. Yeah, which is yeah. Really there's hard. nothing. So it's like here. <laughs> so so the di- or so like to like relate it to your guys thing is wouldn't it be like if somebody took a photo and then somebody watermarked it and then somehow they removed the watermark they could just keep using the photo how would you prove it's yours kind of yeah, thing Yeah that's whole copyright law- laws and stuff like that yeah. So but, the, but there not even in any that, there are yet? laws for that mm-hmm. but yeah. there aren't really yet here well, are there not isn't that that, regulated that's the everyone like is they is they source the blockchain as the representation for like who owns who, the, owns, who owns the contract for the for the digital piece and while that makes sense and all it while it has other applications the whole the just taking um just licensing jpegs with it isn't really where any of the value lies it's it, it, it resembles a bubble it's like it's it's only going to keep rising in value as long as people keep pumping money into it, and all of yeah. a sudden one day there's going to be a moment when the demand stops. And the Big Short, y'all watch that movie? Nope. Okay, I'm alone on that. Is that, <laughs> is that Michael Burry's movie? I think. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember who directed it, but it's like uh, the dude that played fucking Michael Scott, Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Mm. Here's there. Uh, he played the dude. It was him, Brad Pitt, uh, Bradley Martin, I think. Bradley or not Bradley Cooper. Martin, Bradley Cooper. But they played this, like, the stock market was sitting on, like, a mortgage bubble. And it was about to burst. And, like, so they shorted a bunch of accounts, which mm-hmm. I'm just saying words that I don't know what they really mean. <laughs> but they shorted a bunch of stuff. And they became millionaires off of it because they mm-hmm. knew that it was just sitting on, like, fake loans or whatever. And they knew it was going to pop. So they did this. They got a lot of money and it like ruined a bunch of companies, but they're like, obviously you guys know this is about to like fall apart. Yeah. That sounds mm-hmm. like what you're talking about. Also, I'd love to hear you talk to Gary Vee about this because he's very, he's the other way. Yes. Yes. Know, if you hear about him, it sounds like he's kind of starting to like back off. Break. Because yeah. I just saw him on a, there was a huge podcast. He was, he did a podcast with the Nelk boys. Mm-hmm. It's called Full Sin. Like, that's what they just named their everything. All of it? Everything they do is Full Sin. But it's like Full Sin Podcast. And they did one with him. And, like, the whole time he explains, like, cryptocurrency, NFTs, all this shit. Mm. Like, he's like, no, it's like the new everything. But I think it's hard to really it's hard to believe grasp. him because he's got his hand in it. He's, like, part of yeah. the thing. So, like... Mm. They'd be like the government's telling you, like, no, it's good that we control everything yeah. that you have to listen to. Yeah. No, yeah. it's fine. 
that that's also the problem with like cryptocurrencies. I'm, I'm kind of going on a rant here. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> we can talk about bananas, dude. It don't matter. Up, Whatever dude. you want to talk about. But the the problem being is that it's too volatile. The prices don't stabilize around anything at all. Yeah. And so you know one of the one of the biggest parts of if you look up, you know, there's like three things that make up current that make up any currency. It's like exchange of value, and one of them is it has to store its value. And right, you can't buy something tomorrow that was, you know, you buy a pack of gum for a dollar and then the next day it's worth ten dollars and the next day it's worth nothing. And so it's like if your currency doesn't store any value, then it doesn't have any value. And so you can't hedge against inflation with, let's say, Bitcoin or like Ethereum or mm. any of the other cryptocurrencies because there's nothing to say that your dollar that you're spending is going to be worth the same tomorrow. And especially mm. the case whenever the price isn't dictated on anything else. Like if you invest in any regular company, the price goes up and down based on financials, based on sales, based on all sorts of metrics of the company, debt financing, all sorts of stuff. But whenever you base it on just a cryptocurrency, there's no underlying value. It's based on the value of that what everyone collectively says it is mm. based on how much money they're willing to put into it. And, so that's how, why, how do you... and that's why Elon can tweet about it and it goes up like exactly. yeah, ten dollars or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that for the dollar? Like, mm -hmm. why it, doesn't it base itself on like what everyone agrees? Because no, it like it, the dollar, you can go to any store and it's one dollar. Mm -hmm. It bases itself on the word of the U.S. government. That's what the dollar like. Whenever... But can can they enforce that anywhere? So like, say Target was like, this gum is one dollar, but at Walmart. Or like not gum, I guess like the dollar itself. That dollar can only spend eighty cents at Target, but at Walmart it's a dollar's worth of a dollar. Like, what at Target's like? No, dollars are only eighty cents here. Well, because it's based on the word of the U.S. government, and that's the medium of exchange. It's not so they're like, able to enforce it. Yes. You're, so yeah, who enforces then NFTs is what you're explaining or crypto? Yeah, exactly. There's there's nothing backing it. There's, there's no, no regulating force. I guess the the, the point is that all currency for all of history it makes it, you know it's, a, it's an old school mindset but like but it still reigns true that it has to have a regulating body behind it in order for it to still work or everyone has to agree on its value and it has to maintain that value mm -hmm. um but, so how how would you do that would you have to get the government involved or would there be a different you regulating force you would have to have everyone agree that one bitcoin is worth one dollar figuratively yeah. and keep it at that and keep it flat and has a healthy amount of inflation per year, you know, three to five percent inflation year over year on the value of Bitcoin, but the value stays stable. But then wouldn't it make it less enticing? Wouldn't that oh, like well, kind of whole point. Yeah, right? Or, that's, but if that's the whole point, but if you turned it into a regulating currency, it would no longer it would be make exciting. It wouldn't, it's, it wouldn't right now, it's almost like gambling. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. very similar to gambling because you're like. Yeah. I don't know when this is going to pop, but right now it's like, what is Bitcoin at like $60,000 a Bitcoin? It's not that much, but it's like 38000 or something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. Okay. But something is like crazy high, right? Is Bitcoin number one? Probably, or is it Ethereum yeah. or something? It's, I think it's Bitcoin, but yeah, the, yeah, the point being right now. Yeah, but it, it, it's yeah. insane. It's like, like for example, I, I used to skateboard. So this mm -hmm. is a good example. All boards, roughly, depending on the brand... Can range from twenty five dollars a board to like sixty dollars, but it doesn't go over sixty. But that only changes when the entire market changes. So like, mm -hmm. if the entire market goes like our boards are now going to be sixty five for the premiums, mm -hmm. everyone's sixty five. It's not like one board's going to go to a hundred thousand dollars unless yeah. it was a like custom off one board. Mm -hmm. So like, is that why NFTs are like so craze driven because they're so one off unique? There, it's it's mostly craze driven because of the because of the old school idea that you can flip a profit quickly. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you can get rich quick. Yeah, yeah. Get, it's it's just it's another it's mostly a get rich quick scheme. Like there's gonna be, a, a, you know, it could it could be tomorrow, it could be ten years from now, but there there's gonna be a time whenever what everyone holds isn't going to be the value anymore. Yeah. You know, the, the oldest example of that in, ec in economic bubbles was tulips in the Netherlands. Or it was it was tulips in Europe. That's the that's what they teach you in like regular like flowers. Economics. Yeah, mm -hmm. the flowers. It was it was like a pop. I don't remember the year, but it was a popular craze. Let's say like eighteen hundreds. Whenever the it was like the first recorded bubble of in like economics where everyone said everyone wants to buy tulips. Like this is popular thing at weddings. People are liking them at funerals. We need to sell them all over the place, and 
everyone started buying tulips in the hopes that they could resell it immediately for a massive profit. And that's what they kept doing. So they kept buying a ton of tulips, selling them, buying a ton and selling them. And then eventually there came a day whenever the bubble popped and no one wanted to buy tulips anymore because there was too many suppliers. They were over the trend. The craze Mm -hmm. was gone. And now who's sitting on, and the losers are who's sitting on millions of dollars worth of tulips. The point of bubbles is it will turn you a profit as long as there's someone dumber after you who will buy it mm-hmm. off of you. Yeah. So what what really instigates some or like what is the difference between something being like a craze and something being something that is forever going to stay? Like for example, mm-hmm. like the world used to w- go to war over salt. So why is salt like how how do you know right off something is more important? Like salt is obviously important. I don't mm-hmm. know that we should go to the war over it right now, <laughs> but like, how do we know like something's different than salt versus like how do we know NFTs aren't going to become salt one day? Not literal become salt, but you get what I'm saying. Like how mm-hmm. how do we know it's not going to be that important yeah. one day? Like I'm sure when salt first like somebody was like, damn that shit's salty. They weren't <laughs> yeah. like we're Put gonna kill everything. for this. <laughs> yeah, they were just like. Maybe a little less. We'll, less. we'll yeah. hold that over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's more. It's more or less if there's if there's value to it and if the price is right. I mean, it's it's almost impossible to say. I mean, but it's usually bubbles themselves aren't hard to find. But whenever something is valuable, it's usually because it's actually adding value and not yeah. just trying. Mm. It's it's whenever people aren't trying to flip it quick for a profit. Right. So the urgency typically is like. Yeah, emanates it's like, bullshit. How, it's like how is it being how is it being marketed? Are people yeah. saying buy this because you're gonna love this? Is this is gonna be a great thing? This is gonna improve your life? Or are they saying buy this so you can sell it to someone else for a crap yeah. ton more money? Mm, like yeah. what are people telling? Like you? he bought Pretty salt true. and there's salt in the kitchen, and I don't see him trying to sell it to other people. Yeah, I ain't just slinging salt. This is just my either. salt. Like, yeah, that's my salt. Fucking mm-hmm. keep yeah. that thing. Like, I guess that's a good point. Like. Yeah. I, You've explained it better than most people I've yeah, talked to about it. Like, for sure. Or you've made it a little more clear, you know? Definitely. Speaking of bubbles, what um, as somebody who's about to get their license, what are your thoughts on the housing market right now? Well, we were talking about it. bubbles. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Right now it's crazy. And I think here soon we're going to see something along those lines of a crash. Um, I don't yeah, like, think it's going to be as extensive as... I mean, obviously, there are things in place after, you know, 2008 or whatever it was, Mm -hmm. 2009. Mm -hmm. Um, But I definitely think there's going to be a time where things start to really, really crash. I have Um, a question for you guys, since y'all are, like, real estate savvy. How have things gotten more expensive now that people haven't been able to work? Like, since COVID... Like apartments are harder to find, or they're more expensive because we we. Well, we also live in the state of Florida, so well, that's different. That's partially why. Why? Because why there's no mandates here. Nobody cares. So that's why everybody's everything costs here is so what you're much saying? more here. Yeah. Okay. Everybody. Yeah, because we were in an apartment complex. Go to South Florida, bro. Literally, I I swear to God, I get so I have like Zillow on my phone or whatever. Yeah. And I get apartment so I, updates from Tampa and St. Pete area whenever something comes on the market, mm-hmm. and maybe. Eight months ago, and this was still, I mean, everybody's moving. Mm-hmm. Eight months ago, it was like average cost of an apartment was Didn't like take a one. Sip. I know, I was thinking about it and then I started talking. Um, it was like $1,100 or something like that. And now every single one I see is over $1,500. Yeah. And yeah. that's we, within eight months. The apartment complex we lived in. Now I'm like, drinking some more. We went back. So we lived in an apartment complex and it was like a two story, three bedroom, two bath or something. Mm-hmm. And it was like 1200 bucks. And then we all split, and I stayed in the apartment complex, and I got like a two bedroom, one bath or something, or one and a half bath, and it was like nine eighty. While we were there, if we were gonna stay after COVID hit, before splitting, and he bought this house, and then I ended up moving in here, mm-hmm. it went from nine eighty to like thirteen fifty for the apartment I was in. So it became yeah. more expensive than the two story we were in already. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like how i'm already there well it's, it's also because the fed printed like what well, yeah, was the value the crazy of statistic? the dollars they, they print they printed like it was something crazy it was like 90 percent of all u.s currency was printed in like the last oh, year yeah there's something and it's an yeah, insane the value Holy of the dollar is definitely and our interest rates are all at nothing right and now then, so and, then nothing the, even and the fed also regulated. held interest rates at nothing and they're slowly trying to let them rise back up to normal levels because if they just completely 
popped off the lid on interest rates, we'd immediately get thrown into a recession. Like, yeah. that, like, today. Maybe I'm too stupid to understand, but, like, yeah. why? Why would it, why would we go into a recession? Like, why wouldn't we just be like, no? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse like, me, U.S. government. Get your shit together. All right? yeah. yeah, like it, it say interest rates. I assume you mean on like loans and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. home and yeah. like why wouldn't you just be like because it like, would, what would happen that would make that happen like because so interest rates are all regulated by the Fed. So the Fed says, hey, you can have one percent interest rates, two percent interest rates, and then they cap it off. Yeah, at whatever that level is, and so normally interest rates would I think they hang around like seven percent. I think that's the no. I think five that, percent's healthy. I think I thought five. Yeah, the things around like five to seven percent. Something weird. I'm sorry to break there. for a second. Jorge literally has an NFT. <laughs> on have you seen that thing that he's stage. doing with the cards? That, that's, what that's, he, what that's what he's doing. That's what they're doing. Yeah. They they sit there. They they sat there at Icon in in, in that um and at Brief Game case, Bread and they sit there and they will read off all the like all these like cards like playing cards to like sell them. And it's it's mind boggling to me because there will be uh because there's actively like people fighting like in the ring. Like there's like there's like there's people like actively like of course like the fight's going on and yeah. you're and you're engaged in the fight. Yeah. And then yet there's a crowd and people focusing on like them opening up like the card packs. And I'm what? like, there's people actively Literally. putting on a show beating each other to yeah. a pulp, yeah. like fighting. Hey, what even is yeah. this? what is I, this the another I don't know. It, it, it's kind of like the Logan Paul thing when he was doing the Pokemon, and they live rip them open, and they're yeah, like, yo, I got exactly this limited that. edition, oh, whatever. Is that what it is? Yeah, really? that's exactly yeah. what it is. So Why? I don't know what he's exactly doing here, but like... That's crazy. Um, also, you don't know this, but... Or uh, maybe you are connecting the dots. The reason they weren't here the first time, like why we had to rebook, was they were at Icon 1. Yeah. Like the first yeah, Jorge yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, How did that I go? About that. Oh, it, I, I mean, mean, we watched, but like, how did it go for you guys? I mean, oh, I didn't go. She didn't get to go oh, because wow. we we were double booked, and so mm. I could only go. And it was a it was a all right experience. I mean, it was it went obviously the the job and went really well, but um, not a South Florida guy, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I I also <laughs> fancy myself not a South Florida guy. Yeah, yeah, South Florida is a is like it's a different world. Yeah, we're thing. also going to South Florida tomorrow, so <laughs> we're going down to I Lake love Lynn, South Florida, which is dude. Tampa, basically. I love South Florida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like fucking favorite. hate it myself. Oh, yeah, hate but. It went good. The photos turned like that event. I think the photos yeah. were like the best. Like I ever. <laughs> She's like, wow, done was... good. He did good. He's like, I did <laughs> by oh, myself. Yeah. Let me tell you, yeah, <laughs> much like, better. She, she wasn't there. <laughs> did way better. <laughs> do, do you guys have like, like specialties where you're like, oh, yes. I really want to focus on his kneecaps or something? And you're like, <laughs> well, maybe the faces. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. what is the pull and whatever between yeah. you guys like what do you, what do you want to focus on and what do you want to focus on that mm-hmm. maybe y'all have difference um well it's it's kind of really simple i like the um i am always the one who takes charge of the more feminine things so if it's we don't really focus a lot on engagements portraiture it's not our thing but yeah. if somebody's like hey do this we're not going to refuse it so i usually you know take care of those mm-hmm. um i'm also a, i love doing um events so we recently took photos for the Pensacola Community Market. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys have been over there. It's, I'm not sure. Is that the, on Palafox every time? Where no, is that so at? there's the Palafox no. Market every Saturday that's yeah. on Palafox. That's what I thought Yeah, for that's a what I was thinking. I was like, and okay, no, yeah, so I am confusion. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's a separate market that happens once a month, kind of down the road a little bit from Garden. Okay. Um, but anyway, that's the stuff that I'm really into. Um, mm. The You know, there's local business and then there's the hyper small local business yeah. and i really love the hyper small people um so pretty much anything that's more feminine i pretty much do and most of the like masculine things mm. he kind of like really focuses on yeah. so am i being facetious mm. that's a word <laughs> am i being that when i ask like when there's a girl fight are you more into taking the girl photos oh no i don't care we don't care yeah okay. <laughs> yeah i was too no, facetious yeah. um that's yeah. wild so within that like how do you, what is the process of, I assume you take thousands of photos per event, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe close, thousands. Yeah. Especially. Like, the, like icon, like, yeah. or like a island fights. What is like a number you typically hit? Are you try not to go over where you're like, that's too many fucking photos. So that's my problem is I just go like constantly. The yeah, I'm, time. I'm much more selective <laughs> um, because I think, so I've in 
but kind of backtracking a bit later like so one of the one of the biggest reasons why i think a lot of people don't take good photos particularly of like fights and stuff is because they don't train i mm-hmm. think like this I think is very true because you know. like i mean i've i did taekwondo since a kid and then now i do like jujitsu and how long have you been doing that I've been doing jiu-jitsu for like two, three years. I just got oh. my blue belt recently. Oh, yeah. Congrats, bro. Congrats. But, uh, that. Where do you train, by the way, also? The Academy of Pensacola. Okay. And what yeah, were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say um, that you should have got that a long time ago. Oh, yeah. But Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> also, your head coach is about to fight Brock, right? I yeah. mean, it's a jiu-jitsu event, but still. Yeah. yeah we it's, uh, go. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, Rob. He's going out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people don't take good photos or don't have an understanding more importantly because they don't train. I wrote an, I wrote an Instagram post about it a long, a little bit ago about what to and what not to take photos of in fights. Like too many people will, they focus on the person who will lose because there's more blood involved. Like there was particular, there was one instance where, uh, it was out at one of the game bread events that happens over in Biloxi. Yeah. And it was on one of the amateur undercards, and one of the fighters, his face was just pooling with blood. Like, I mean, he lost, like, pretty bad, and it was just pouring out of his mouth all over the canvas, and they, like, couldn't get it to stop. And there were a couple of photographers just taking pictures of him. And I'm like, yeah, let's, let, let, let's, let's take a step back here. You've never been punched in the mouth before, clearly. Yeah. And you yeah. don't, like, you can... I think can... it's an important distinction to make, though, that you didn't just completely hide it. You still yeah. took a photo of it, but the entire story. Yeah. Because yeah, the winner yeah. was like bent over, like, are you okay? Yeah. He was like concerned. Yeah. And it was the whole story of, you know, the camaraderie of like MMA and everything. And I feel mm-hmm. like that there's something about that to be said, like between videography and photography. And like, that's where like, maybe I would urge you guys to do videography one day is like, mm-hmm. those get lost. Like. You may see, like, pictures of, like, maybe the opponent, like, kneeling with him and, like, con- consoling yeah. him afterwards. But, like, if you don't get that photo, like, maybe mm-hmm. you see it and you go to click it and he's gone by then. Like, you miss that. Mm-hmm. There's somewhere yeah. in there that you maybe miss the story if you don't get... Like, somebody might go through Instagram and see the photo and don't see that you can scroll to the right and see more mm-hmm. of the yeah. story. And they just see that one photo and they're like, that dude got fucked. Yeah. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. and they don't see the story. But, like, with these little clips, you'll see in between, like... When Dustin lost to Khabib at Island Fight or at uh, Fight Island, there was a clip, or no, it was the uh, Oliveira. No, it might have been the Khabib, but there's a little kid, and I don't know the correct terminology, but he had the the garb on, okay. like he was like of Muslim descent, I think. Yeah. And he's like, "Why are you sad?" And he goes, "I just lost everything." And the little boy was said something along the lines like, "You're still a champion." And it was like a moment between the little boy and Dustin. Yeah. And it was like mm-hmm. the little kid still believed in Dustin, even though like Khabib's their like guy, but he's like, yeah, no, it's like, okay. And it's like pictures. You would mm-hmm. not see that little moment. Like you would see a picture of it, but you don't know what's being said. And it's like, yeah. I think on one side of it though, that's kind of the art of it is that yeah. it's what's what you have to put together in your head of what's the story. Mm, it's is. capturing. It's kind of like moment. a different perspective. That, I think that's cause... how we learned like street photography. Like that's yes. we learned photography by you know a lot of people will only do photography, especially if they get into it for business, just taking pictures of business. But mm. we walked up and down Palafox hundreds of times taking photos of like people, random people and and moments and like of like and like especially like parades and big events and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I think it's kind of the distinction between photography as an art form and then photography as a commercialized subject. Yeah. So I don't know if you know anything of, or you've most likely seen it, but one of the biggest things that we've always hated is the smoke bomb trend. Do you remember that? Where I know, they like, would throw music those videos and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, obviously, you know, in photography, you're allowed to take photos of whatever you want. But the idea is that someone did it and everyone just copied the exact same thing of yeah. the, some random person with a smoke bomb behind them. And I think that that is like this weird era, like, sphere of photography where it's just whatever the next trend is take a picture of it yeah whereas i think something that we like to focus on in, in when we do photography is more along the lines of the authenticity authenticity and the candid moments yeah. that really i think I that's like the candid true a lot yeah. a lot of people do most yeah. business owners when they approach us they say we want candid photos yeah that's yeah. why we've been approached by multiple businesses because they were like we because we don't hide 
like what because people can people can stiff out fake staged photos yeah. and people can and especially even um in the language that you speak even like if i if i came on here and started saying yeah nfts are cool crypto is cool like yeah. like it, it it brings off an air of no you're, you're not being honest and that's just naturally human to be able to pick that out yeah but uh and we will say that stage photos are mandatory in a sense you have to have yeah, your headshot right. for LinkedIn but to an yeah. extent you shouldn't be you shouldn't be over editing to the point and you shouldn't also be staging to the point where it's not even the same thing right yeah. there's there's two questions I want to state before I forget because I'm super bad at forgetting one is there's a there's like certain trends out there that obviously y'all don't like the smoke bomb thing mm -hmm. what are your feelings on like people that literally specialize in like taking artsy nude photos like oh uh, because what is it called? that's boudoir. like a boudoir photos boudoir yeah that's what that's they're the called mm -hmm. okay so like that's huge especially mm -hmm. in the local area like yeah, people are like really big on doing that or like video shoots on, on that too and then before i forget the next question i'm gonna say that too and then we can jump back to that is there no fear for your photography company that your name is both of your names like, I'm not mm -hmm. wishing you guys to ever split, but was there never any fear on, like, Ty and Cat is our name? Like, because, like, I would never want our podcast, not for any reason. Maybe it's just because I've known people Damn, that got, bro, like... he hates you. <laughs> I would never That's want it to be... That's how it is, though. Well, well, first off, like, Cody and Hilton's a terrible yeah, podcasting. Yeah, Cody Hilton doesn't just If he just suggested that, good. like, probably wouldn't have went for Yeah, we wouldn't have done the podcast, yeah. you know? <laughs> no, but, like, I've known people that got married to my mom, and she's mm. pretty deep on the marriage well. side, but... uh that they've gotten her name or something and i'm like well mm -hmm. that was a terrible choice because mm -hmm. she's not gonna be with you for very long okay yeah. is that what you said to them <laughs> i mean i have <laughs> talked to some of them personally and so i'm like before well don't do that faces. Yeah. Yeah. but wow. like cool. there's something about that like naming something your thing mm -hmm. like there's no fear behind that nope. no 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 there's, there's no fear for us because we're in it for the long haul like okay. we're um I didn't mean that as like yeah, a... No, we understand. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> yeah, like that's it. just a thing. Like people are like, don't yeah. get her name tattooed on you yeah. or his name. Yeah. Because like... I No, I hear you. Yeah. I know where... I understand where you're vibe. coming from for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then you already answered that, so you can answer the other one if you want. Like I don't know... Yeah. Like I see so many people doing that and it's like literally people that just picked up a camera and now they do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like what is your vibe on those types of photos or photographers? It's, it's just a niche. It's, yeah. It's not like a... It's not like a trend. Boudoir has been around for. I mean, you forever. can see it in artwork. Literally, think about all well, the statues the... that are in the Louvre of all the naked statues and all the paintings. I just think it's a different yeah. form of art. I mean, mm. like when people will take photos for like I don't know two months, and then all of a sudden that's all they do. Oh. That's kind of weird. I don't mean like people that are <laughs> oh actually gosh. really good at this. That's just like um. Because I know people that have done it and now. <laughs> <I, yeah. laughs> I was, I was about, about to name drop something. About to yeah. drop a bomb on no, the podcast. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. No, we know a couple people who do the exact same thing. Where do they you, will. Do you ever have anybody close enough where you're like, hey, man, like, if you're going to do this, like, in any trend in photography, mm -hmm. where you're like, hey, maybe this is how you should do it? Because, like, you're kind of being a little sloppy or something with it. Um, we've never said that to anybody, but we have, we know. A couple people um, specifically who do the exact same thing where they just drop and pick up like the next thing that they see everybody's doing which yeah. is you're, mm -hmm. you're never gonna like if, if you're always chasing a trend especially in something as competitive and crazy as photography like you have to start being authentic and being yourself to be able to stand out or else you're never gonna get I, anywhere yeah. you're gonna look if, the whole point is if them if if you know, let's say you were to hire person A and person B. Well, person A looks like everyone else because they're only doing what everyone else does. And person B actually looks like something different. Mm -hmm. You're actually going to get something different. Which I think is something that you guys do very well, by the way. Your mm -hmm. podcast is very different than a lot of other people's. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. you. Fucking yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking different over here. Yeah. yeah. Probably because we have no push behind us. <laughs> we have nobody backing what we're... <clears throat> And my wallet does that, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is us. That, that, that's one of the dangers, though. That's one of the dangers of big business is whenever big business starts affecting, it starts what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. starts yeah. starts telling Changing. you how to do things. You know, it's yeah. gonna ruin it. And I've thought about that, at you know, not recently, I guess, but I've thought about that as being like, 
would it really be worth it to have somebody backing us specifically in the podcast world? Because it's like, we want to do this the way we want to do it. Yeah. You know? And it's like, I wouldn't want somebody coming in and saying like, okay, you have to do this. You have to get this done. You have to do yeah. this. And like, it's got, and it's like, well, there goes the whole fucking point of the podcast. You know what I'm saying? I think what, like, what helps us work so well is this is the podcast. Mm-hmm. There's yeah. nobody else. There's not yeah. like, now we yeah. do want, in the future there to be more than just us but like not that like has their hand in the jar you know Mm -hmm. like we want to have other people that like give us ideas maybe or like whatever but like that's in the future and that's plans or whatnot but we don't want ever to have someone pushing us in a direction yeah Mm -hmm. like the reason this works is because we're leading the direction yeah i mean it works for us. We're not like fucking millionaires or anything, but like this works for us. And this is what we enjoy to do. Yeah. You know, this is what we yeah. enjoy. So it's mm-hmm. like, why take that part away? Yeah. We know? like, I've seen other things. Like, for example, Barstool Sports did this thing with, uh, I think it's called Call Your Daddy. Call Her Daddy. Call Her Daddy. Call Her Daddy. Call Her Daddy. Yeah. Her Daddy. So, like, do you know the story behind that? So it was a mm-hmm. podcast between two girls and. Mm-hmm. They blew up pretty quickly, but they signed a deal like, yo, we got a three-year deal. And mm-hmm. after that three years, then we can renegotiate. You guys come walk with the podcast. But in the meantime, in these three years, we're going to pay you a salary. So mm-hmm. I think their salary originally was like $70,000 a year each, mm-hmm. which is stupid money to me right now. Like yeah. That would change my life. Yeah. <laughs> okay? That's a lot of money. I think they did like three months and then renegotiated it to like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Because what? Of, like three yeah. months in to the already signed contract, yeah. they were like, "Yeah, y'all are blowing up. We'll do that." Mm-hmm. And I think they got like a percentage of merch, and then they renegotiated again. And all this was being driven from. So this is a podcast, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm just. It's hard to explain. <laughs> There's a blonde girl. There's a brown haired girl. Mm-hmm. The brown haired girl does nothing on the podcast. The blonde girl did everything, literally everything, other than like the barstool marketing. Like they might have pushed like artwork and stuff that the girl didn't make. Yeah. But that was like helping them. She approved mm-hmm. it. The brown haired girl that did nothing was always like, "We need more money. We need this. We need that." <laughs> but all she would do is sit there and be on the mic and then leave. Mm-hmm. She secretly, or I guess like not so secretly started dating like the hbo rep or something like he was like super high up in hbo and he was like y'all need more money like he was pushing her and like pushing her and pushing her and it was like they were they were girls Mm -hmm. i say girls like they were boys like we're boys you know Mm -hmm. you don't really use girls like that but like they were tight right Yeah. yeah she was like i don't think we should keep pushing this like we have a good thing going like and she goes no we're gonna ultimately the brown hair girl just is gone Blonde girl is doing it alone now. Mm-hmm. But what they were going to do, like uh, Dave Portnoy, which is like the owner of Barstool Sports, he was like, we're going to do this whole three-year deal and let them walk with everything at the end of the three years. Like the the name, all, all of the content, Mar- like yeah. everything was going to be theirs at the end of the three years. Yeah. That is the only sort of like thing I could see working for us. It's somebody like that that would like, Put us on like whatever. Don't mm-hmm. fuck with our product at all. Mm-hmm. Just help push it. That would be the only way that would work. It could mm-hmm. never be like we couldn't be on like Fox Sports or something or like yeah. ESPN because they're gonna be like, hey, you can't say fuck, you can't say retard, you can't say slow, you can't yeah. say. Yeah. I mean, we already try to avoid some of those words, but yeah. they slip. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But we're not a- actively trying to hurt anybody's feelings. We're just being us. Yeah. 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 And you know, that eventually will pay dividends or it won't. But hey. we're gonna have fun. But you know we're gonna enjoy time. doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So yeah, we enjoy y'all's photos, by the way. Like yeah, oh, thank you. I am oh, yeah. so happy that like, as for Dean to make such a smart move, like mm-hmm. as far as like having a go to photographer like group. Like mm-hmm. I'm glad it's y'all. Like y'all, every time I've come across y'all, y'all have been like really nice, really professional, and like y'all mm-hmm. don't come off like sleazy. You know, mm-hmm. like there's been some people I know that take photos and I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. congrats yeah. on that. And is there anything big coming up that you guys want to shout out or any events that you're going to be at? Like, are you all going to be at Icon 2? 
That's March 18th, I, isn't it? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we should be. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as long as that all works out. Word. Yeah, it's, it's never set in stone until like the day before. They usually like I think get with us a week. This before. should <laughs> come out the Thursday before that. Yeah. So we hope to see you guys. Yeah, <laughs> sounds yeah. good. Yeah, but uh, we're gonna get out of here. Do you want to plug yeah. anything like any Instagrams, social medias, or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Um, at Ty and Cat on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Tyandcatphotography dot com. Yep, that's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good shit. Right. Well, thank you guys for coming and hanging out. Yeah, we really do appreciate so it. Thank you, thank so you all. Much. Oh yeah, we're gonna get up out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for listening. We love you. Yee-hee! Yee-hee!